So here we are at Unit 5, Organize Activities for Yourself and Others. And Unit 5 is broken down into uh, two sections. The first one is, is called um, Keep Track of Your Class Schedules and Appointments Using Google Calendar. So that's going to be uh, Google Calendar based. And the uh, second one is called um, Get More Organized. Get More Organized. So let's, let's move forward and we'll start with Unit 5 here. Um, so the first one again is Keep Track of Your Class Schedules and Appointments Using Google Calendar. So here we are. Now, I want you to watch the following video clip. Okay, this is embedded into my personal, uh, this is embedded into the PowerPoint, which if you click on the description below, it'll take you to a link to my TPT store, and you can get this, this entire thing with the links and everything embedded in and the whole thing. But if not, you can watch this video, um, you can watch this video uh, just on my YouTube channel. So I want you to, to do tasks 1 through 5, 7 and 9, because that's what uh, is related to this uh, to this uh, section. So, um, let's stay organized with a busy schedule. So how do you stay organized? Um, that's where Google Calendar comes in. So users can create a calendar for each facet of their lives and they can either share that calendar with their colleagues or the school or students or, or they can keep it personal. So the big thing here is that Google Calendar has uh, multiple calendars. Multiple calendars. Um, you can create different events for each of these different calendars so you could really sort of compartmentalize um, you know all your activities and stuff. Um, you can also set up custom reminders slash notifications, right? Those words are used interchangeably. Reminders and notifications, same thing, right? So a uh, notification will let you know, hey, you got an event coming up, uh, basketball practice coming up, uh, 15 minutes, half hour, and you can set the time. Also, um, calendar event uh, notifications uh, start on default. So I'm going to show you how you can go in there and change that up. Okay. Um, here are a couple tasks you need to be able to uh, complete, and it's part of the Google Certified Educator um, exam, so you're going to have to be able to do these things. These are quick links that you can click them, and it'll take you, here they are, quick link here, quick link here, quick link here. If you click that, it'll take you right to a video I've done, and it'll show you how to complete each of the, the steps. Okay, now uh, I'm going to show you some screenshots. So to create a classroom calendar, all you're going to do is click right here. So you should see in calendar that the left side it says add other calendars. So you're going to click that plus. Okay. See here I have a bunch of calendars already. Birthday calendars, SAT prep, uh, task calendars. And uh, so you'll click this here right here in red. And then um, take you right here where it says create calendar. So click add other calendars. And then um, click uh, add new calendar to open a window. So first after you click this, there's something going to come up that says add new calendar. And it'll take you to a window, and you have to name it, name it right here, get the calendar description, and click Create Calendar. So one more time, you go here, you're going to click Add New Calendar. I told, I told you something will pop up, and then um, enter your information and uh, create, create a new calendar. Um, create an event. All you have to do to create an event is either click this red plus icon down below in the bottom right. Okay, let me go back real quick. So the bottom right over here, you click this plus and it'll help you add an event. Or you can just click on any date. So if I just move my uh, clicker on the 10th and, and, and uh, simply left click, it'll open up and I can add an event. Um, let's say you want to share a calendar. First thing, uh, first select more next to your calendar. So you go to your calendar here. Here's my calendar, let's say. There's three little dots here. Okay, and, and you see the orange arrow, right? So so more next to your calendar. And then you can go to settings and sharing. So you'll click these three little dots, setting and sharing, and then click, um, then it'll open up. So once you open it up here, right, if you want to share calendar, you'll go down to access permission, uh, share with people. Okay, you can click any one of them. This here is access permission because let's say you want to share it publicly. Once you click access permission here, um, you see here in the purple, you can check this box off and it'll make it public. If you want to share with specific peoples, just add their name and it'll share it as well. Okay. So let's say you want to um, set customized event notifications. Again, just like before, right? You want to go to more, go to settings, and then you see in the blue, it says event notification, all day events, general notification events, all that's found in the blue circle. So once you go again, just like before, to settings and sharing, you can go down to the blue, click it, and then right here at the right, you just set everything, notification, time, minutes, do you want it all day, scroll down, they'll give you a lot more options. 
All right, so let's keep moving here. Multiple calendar syndrome. Okay, we said that you can create multiple calendars. That that's that's a big thing here. So uh, create a separate calendar unique to each audience, right? Let's say you want to create a calendar for the chess club. All right, and then you want to create a challenge a calendar for your your personal life, and then you want to create a, a calendar for the basketball team. That's that's um you know that's the excellent part about Google calendars. Um, by creating a classroom calendar, it can be shared publicly, and you could share um information like homework lectures important dates um, all sub calendars are uniquely uniquely named so if you go back you can see I have some named uh, SAT class I have one named I think uh, basketball I have my, my general calendar so you can name them however you want and um, they're actually they go in alphabetical order let me go back real quick to one here okay so you see here it starts it starts with the first one the teaching and educate that that's my name so it'll start with your name calendar then it goes um, alphabetical order, so B, and then P, S, T, and then um, to uh, T, H. So you can see there it's in alphabetical order. Um, okay, also color code, right? The, the calendars are color coded. You can see there's different colors there, and you can set up reminders for, for each specific calendar. Um, all right, lesson check. All events must be put on the user's personal calendar as well as other calendars they create. Is that true or false? That's false, okay? It don't have to be in the personal calendar. It could be on, 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 you know, you could do it to one calendar and not the other. So it doesn't have to always be on the personal calendar. You could put it on any calendar, any calendar you want to put it on, put it on. All right, sub-calendars on Google Calendar appear in what order? Okay, what we, ju we just said this, right? It's in what? Alphabetical, right? All events on calendar will receive the default notification setting unless otherwise changed. I just talked about that as well. That's true, right? Okay, it's going to start on default. It's on you to go in there and change everything up. Um, a Google Calendar can have which of the following attributes? All right, so take a look here. What attributes can it have? I mean, it can be color-coded. You could have a distinct color operation. You can have a default notification reminder. You could change that however you want. It doesn't have to be default, but it could. A unique name and doesn't have an alert sound. All right, so here we are, uh, Unit 5, which is uh, now getting more organized. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm getting, getting your tasks in hand. So we're going to focus on Google Tasks. That's a feature found in Gmail and Google Calendar. So it's found in both, okay, and it allows you to create to-do lists. So your tasks are found where? Gmail, Calendar, and uh, it can be used to create to-do list. Google Tasks allow you to take control. Uh, excuse me, take the content of a mail message and send it to your calendar. Um, and you can create multiple task lists. I'm going to show you that as we go, right? So you can create a bunch of different task lists. It's not like you have just one. Um, getting your tasks in hand. All right. So another alternative is Google Keep, right? The previous slide here, we talked about Google Tasks. Now we're going to talk about Google Keep. And you see this um, this little light bulb. Okay, that, that's for Google Keep. Um, I love Google Keep. Uh, it adds a, a more power. It's more powerful than Google ta Tasks because it has a web interface. You can get to, you can download the app on your phone, which I've done. Um, you can add more information. You can add images. You can't add images in um, Google Tasks. Text. Uh, um, and you can even collaborate with others. Okay, your to-do list can be shared through a Google Doc as well. There's a lot you could do with Google Keep. Um, all right, so let's take a look at um, at uh, tasks. All right, so to assign tasks in Gmail, here's what you do. Um, again, this is Google Tasks. You're going to open a message. So here's a message from the Google Group. It's opened up. I've opened up this message. Um, click more. I go up here to the blue. Click more. And then this orange thing right here, I go to add to tasks. Okay? That's for Gmail. Now let's say you want to do it for calendars. Okay, take a look here. Check the tasks calendar. You see here I got that check where it says tasks. This is red. I check this task calendar. And then it'll pop up right here. Okay, if you take a look at, at the at the right, it pops up on the right, and then you're able to, to edit. Um, you see this purple thing going down? That's where you can edit, change names. So you're gonna click all the way down there right here. If you want to change this up so one more time tasks and then this will pop up um, all right here's a look at at, uh, at keep right um, Google keep 
this is what it looks like. It looks like this on your phone and on the desktop. This is a screenshot from, from my desktop, but it looks same thing on your phone. So if you want to take a note, what you do is you just go right here and just start typing in a note. Um, if you want to add an image, you see this thing? This is the universal Google image icon. You click this here, and you can add an image. And it's great from your phone, right? What I'll do is I'll, I'll take my cell phone here, and I don't know if there's a list or something like that. I'll, I'll take my cell phone, and I'll stamp a picture, and I'll add it to my Google Keep or something like that. I got the iPhone. Um, all right. Making more of lists and tasks, right? How do you make the most of this? Google Tasks in Gmail, um, the task feature is the quickest and easiest way to take your paper to-do list and turn it into digital. Um, and every Gmail user, or again, this is task, not keep. Every Gmail user has a default task list, and you could add as many lists as you like, okay? That's in Gmail. Now, let's say in Calendar, right? When you're in Calendar, you can assign a task a due date, and it will automatically appear in your task calendar. So remember, what do you do with calendar? Calendar, you can assign a due date, okay? And at the bottom, it says, make sure the task calendar is enabled. So to enable it, what do you got to do? You got to check off that, you got to check off that, um, that box by it. Um, let's keep moving forward here. Okay, organization begins now. Don't worry about that. No, here, listen. Let her scream. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's no big deal. For, for small scale events, use tasks in Gmail to keep a short list of little things that you need to bring. Um, what I typically do when teachers are asking for my approach to lesson plans, I put that information in a Google Note and then share it. Okay, so again, Google Note, uh, excuse me, Google Keep, you can share, all right? Whereas tasks, you really can't. Um, that, that's one thing you want to focus on. That's one thing you want to remember. Um, here's here's another example. What I started doing is using Google Keep to take a picture of a handout on your cell phone, and then um, that way the picture of the article can be stored and organized. So you know, with Google Keep again, what's good is you, you take your phone, you take a picture, and you kind of can can upload it, and everybody can work with it. Um, all right, lesson check. Gmail tasks allow for which of the following? What are the what does tasks in Gmail allow for? Multiple task lists. That was it. I'm going to go back real quick. Remember, Gmail tasks, just multiple task lists, nothing else. Um, with Google Keep Note, what can you do, right? Before we said Gmail, now we're saying Google Keep. What can you do? Okay, you can add pictures, you can color code, and you can remind the user of when an item needs to be addressed. And if you look at these two questions here, what's Google trying to, what, what's the fundamental training is really trying to tell you? They're saying Gmail tasks really doesn't have that much. Google Keep, you can do a lot more. So it looks like they're pushing Google uh, Keep. Um, Google Keep reminders will automatically show up on your calendar when assigned. Remember, reminders just have to be toggled on. So is that true or false? Of course it's true. And the last one for this lesson check. In order for a task to appear on a specific date in your Google Calendar, you must what? Assign the task a due date. Okay, remember we said with Google Calendar, you can assign the due date. So if you want it to appear, you got to give it a due date. Um, all right, here's Unit 5 check, the, the whole entire unit. So what are some features of Google Calendar that can help improve organization as an educator? Well, what do you think? Public setting, so you can make it public so everybody can see it. Um, email notification of events, send out emails. Um, shared calendars, okay? Uh, again, you can share with somebody, collaborate on a calendar, and even invite colleagues to events. So all four of these you can do. All right, on your newly created Google Calendar, add an event for a meeting that you'll have at uh, 1 p.m. How do you invite someone else to the event? What do you do? Um, do you remember? You enter the email address in the Add Guest field. So you'll see a little thing in the corner. It says Add Guest. You'll just add the email address. In the new version of Google Calendar, which ways are there to view a calendar? Ah, you know, I really didn't go over this, but um, what are the ways you can view it in, in the new version? Day view, week view, month view, and year view, okay? And remember, um, everything I've shown you was, uh, was the new Google Calendar. There's an old one, but you should always, whenever you're doing this, you should always work on the new one. 
Google Tasks integrate well with which other apps? Okay, Tasks. What, what did we talk about with Tasks here? Okay, we mentioned Google Calendar, right? You can have Tasks in Google Calendar, and you can have Tasks in what? In Gmail, right? We didn't mention Google Sites. And Google Keep is like the alternative. So when you talk about Google Tasks, you got it in Gmail, and you got it in Google Calendar. Google Keep, that's that's the thing with the cell phone I was talking about. Um, that, that'll be the alternative. Um, all right, although you can add dates and reminders to both Google Tasks and Google Keep Notes, uh, why would you choose to use Google Keep? Why? All right, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, Google Keep allows you to add photos, all right? As I, sh as I said before, what I like to use it, I'll, I'll use it to uh, take photos. But it can also set location-based reminders, okay? Um, let me go back right here. And that's it for Unit 5. So listen, if you don't want to go sit through this this, this whole um, you know video presentation, just click on the link in the description, and um, you'll be able to get the PowerPoint. And if if you if you're in a district and you're looking for a, uh, you know a, a training for your entire district or entire school, click the link in the description as well. That'll take you to my page, and then you could uh, request my services. Do doesn't matter where where it is. Um, all right, thank you, and I'll see you at the next unit.